Hello and welcome to the Big Bang. Here we will discuss the workings of a pH electrode. You may have heard already that pH stands for the potential or power of hydrogen, and it measures the negative logarithm of the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. Measuring pH is quite important since many different chemical processes in living beings are pH dependent. Different tissues or fluids in your body also have specific pH values, and variations from these healthy values could indicate disease. The, the pH electrode provides you with one way to go about measuring pH in a given solution. The basic concept of pH measurements is based on the idea that water is in equilibrium with hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions. So you should be able to find both ion concentrations in a solution, often at different proportions. But overall, if you multiply both concentrations, you will always get 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter squared. When you have more hydroxide ions, your pH falls above 7, and we consider such a solution to be basic. When you have roughly equal amounts of each ion, the pH is 7, and you have a neutral solution. Note that a pH of 7 is actually the pH of pure water. Finally, when you have more hydrogen ions than the 10 to the negative 7 in solution, you have an acidic solution. The pH electrode will measure the pH of your desired solution by measuring a voltage. This voltage can be calculated if you know the potential of your hydrogen ion electrode, the potential of your reference electrode, and your nurse potential. That can be useful and all, but we are trying to find the hydrogen ion concentration, or the pH of your solution, correct? So you can actually express your voltage in terms of the hydrogen ion concentration in your sample and the hydrogen ion concentration in a special compartment of one of your electrodes. Note that you will need your gas constant, your temperature, and a Faraday constant as well. Make sure that the units match between these three factors, R, T, and F, so that your calculations are not off. At room temperature, this equation can even be further simplified, as you can see to the right in light orange. The 62 millivolts is the value you get at room temperature by multiplying R times the T times the natural log of 10 divided by F. Let's now make sense of what these terms mean. This is a very simple schematic of a pH electrode for the purpose of explaining its inner workings. Let's assume the sample you have selected is blood, which has a pH of about 7.4. You have to the left the reference electrode, also known as the outer electrode. To the right, you have the hydrogen ion sensitive electrode, also known as the inner electrode. You will be measuring the voltage between these two electrodes. Although we will not go over what the electrodes are made of, you can consider these to be both silver slash silver chloride electrodes, which is a typical composition for this application. Now, onto the special compartment in pink. Notice a dotted line around the drawing of the hydrogen ion sensitive electrode. This is a semi permeable glass membrane. Only hydrogen ions can cross this special semi permeable membrane. Inside the membrane, there is a saturated solution of hydrochloric acid, or HCl. This saturated HCl solution ensures that the concentration of hydrogen ions inside the glass membrane compartment is constant or unchanging. By measuring the voltage across the electrodes, you can then calculate the concentrations of hydrogen ions between the sample and the HCl saturated compartments. These equations should now make much more sense. You can use the measured voltage to calculate the pH of any sample you want, as long as you have first calibrated your electrode with a sample or buffer of known pH, such that you will have solved for the pH of the HCl compartment first. There is one brief consideration of practical importance regarding this electrode. The pH electrode is actually not so great for measuring the pH of samples with pH values that are either too high or too low. The electrode can be too sensitive at a high pH value, 
and you can saturate at a low pH value. So make sure to consider using this electrode for pH values that are outside these extremes. This is all for now on the pH electrode, but make sure to check out the Severing House PCO2 electrode for a great application of the pH electrode in measuring levels of carbon dioxide in the body. I will see you next time.